Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini Apprentice. This is version 13, and today we're going to make a text sphere. So we'll start off by control clicking on the sphere, spacebar G, we'll double click on the node. This is the generator. We want it to generate a polygon mesh made of quadrilaterals, 18 by 36. Now I'm going to activate the select tool over here, and then I'm going to spacebar left click. And we want to remove these triangles from the mix, so I'm going to right click on this, choose select front facing only, shift drag, spacebar left mouse, push up, shift drag, spacebar mouse around, looks like we have all quads. This will be the basis for our UV texture, which will be in polar mode, fixed boundary seams. I'm going to throw down a UV edit here, and we'll go ahead and split the window at this point, because Houdini has a special view just for UVs. Trying to space bar, ah, there we go. If we pop back up to here, we'll notice that our UVs that were generated by the UV texture polar did not exist within our unit area, which is this unit here. And to view this unit area, we'll go ahead and I'm pressing the D key for display options. I'm going to choose a, uh, I want the synced one but I want the TIFF. There we go. Do not apply to all views, but display in the background. So now we can clearly see our unit area here. So we're going to go ahead and move these so they line up a little better. I'm going to throw this away. Whoops. And with my mouse in this window, I'm going to press the Y key which cycles between the various tools, between move, rotate, and scale. So I'm going to scale these up just a little, Y key, move them back down, and that looks a lot better. Now, with these aligned where I want them, now I'm going to throw down a UV edit. And what we'll use the UV edit for, and to visualize this, we'll go ahead and we will add a clay material to our sphere, we will use a color map and I'm going to pick the cycles AO ping and what this is is, is it's, I'm going to drop this on here spacebar mouse wheel in you'll see it's the same image as this except it has baked in ambient occlusion shadows so it looks a little better in the viewport and for final renders uh, we're going to jump back to the sphere object here and we're going to make a few edits now, the way this edit mode works is, uh, like, for instance, we will drag a selection, and we can visualize that over here as a selection as well. And we can see our parts. We can see this part is here, and I'm mousing, middle wheel mouse out. And we're just arbitrarily going to drag this guy up here. And notice this, I'm still getting texture even though I'm out of the unit square. That's because UVs wrap around. And so I'm thinking I want this pipe all the way around. So we'll leave that one there. We'll do the same thing down here. We'll make another selection, maybe a little bit bigger. We'll visualize it down here. And uh, we will make it, say, look like that. Yeah, we'll go somewhere around there. And then uh, we'll do like, say, a thin line of just, I guess we got two up there. We'll do three here. And we can see what's happening here. We can say, all right, I'm using this kind of as my edge. Uh, we'll break it one more time. We'll just cut this guy in half, kind of visualize where we want him. Once again, we'll use that pipe as a 
kind of separator and then we'll grab this middle section kind of whoops let's click drag middle middle drag down still getting used to viewport navigation here and we'll say that's it we've got these big panels here in the middle a ladder all right everything is looking good so we'll go ahead and pop back to single view for a moment just so we can do our next step to to get to the next step we're going to bring up this bottom pane here so we can bring up a companion details view now the details view is the detail for the object which is the sphere object and we notice here that we have these different columns there's details this is for primitives vertices and points points are what we're going to displace to make our text sphere but if we look here our UVs were generated on vertices that means that the VOPSOP will have no access to those unless we migrate them to this next column here and what's also even stranger at least to me in Houdini is that if I go back to my texture node and I choose orthographic you'll notice that some of these projection types generate on the points and some generate on the vertices this was confusing to me at first I didn't understand why sometimes my my UVs were in one location and sometimes they were in another and it was because I hadn't set the projection type I didn't even imagine that that the different projection types would arbitrarily put some here and some there so now that we know we're going to leave it on polar and we're going to go ahead and promote an attribute and the attribute we want to promote is the UVs we're going to change the name here to displaced UVs we will keep the originals for texturing we will go from vertex to point because this is the vertex column this is the points column and we're gonna say UV so if we think about this and look at it what promote is doing is it's taking UV which is the original name which is to the left of this bracket index this is an array here and it's copying them to this level here points but it's renaming them they're now called displaced UVs so with that I'm going to right click here and type sub we'll add a subdivide then we'll right click and finally get to our VOP SOP which is going to do all our displacement and with that in mind we'll double click move our globals out of the way and get to work in this view I'm going to press tab type DISP for displace along normal tab LU for luminance tab TEX for texture and tab VEC for vector to float and then finally tab IM for import now let's go ahead and connect these guys up now we're going to import the attribute we just created so we're going to go ahead and type displaced UVs here now the the displaced UVs come in as a vector attribute on op input index 0 and you might wonder what that is and we'll go up a level and look that is the input to the VOPSOP itself so this is index 0 1 2 3 jump back in here we're importing this attribute which is connected to 0 and if you notice we can only go 0 to 3 we'll leave it there vector to vector now the vector to float has broken our vector into the X Y and Z components X is 1 goes to S Y is 2 goes to T color to RGB luminance to amount and then our final displace points to our output points before we leave this level let's go ahead and promote the scale and the picture we're using now if we pop up to this level and visualize our VOPSOP, we'll go ahead and get rid of this uh, lower pane. I'm going to spacebar mouse wheel out. You can see, yes, 
we are getting a displaced sphere, but it does not look right. And that's because the texture map is still pointing to the default mandrel pick. So let's go ahead and choose the correct displace tiff, which is the same exact one. It's not the right one. I've got a couple here in my system. Atom synced, displaced, AO synced. This is the one we want. Now, I've seen this before with Houdini where it just doesn't update. I made a change and it doesn't, it didn't realize the network needed updated. And I think it has to do, I'm going to call it a bug, with promotion. See, if I go back into the Vopsop and I just change my promoted parameter, boom, all of a sudden Houdini realizes, oh yeah, something changed. So we have to help Houdini update. And now my promoted parameter here is working just fine. So how do we make this look more techy? We've got all our connections set up. And that's where the subdivide comes in. We just need to give it more geometry. I'm going to set this to 3. And there we are. Looks a little bit horsey, so we'll go ahead and click on the Vopsop and drag down our scale, get it to a reasonable size, and there you have it. We have a text sphere inside of Houdini. And I'll go ahead and link in these texture maps. These are free texture maps. Uh, made by Michaelis on BlenderArtist.com. He's offered them up, so I'm trying them out in another app. They work great in Blender and they work great here in Houdini. And with that we can actually go back and we'll split our pane one, one more time just to show you what else we can do. We don't have to be happy with this, this result here. We can still play around after we've laid this stuff out. Like, uh, for instance, Maybe I want uh, these. And notice this, I'm not getting that same yellow selection I was. And this is kind of what I was hinting at earlier with how to operate the UV edit. Now, once you've gone to another node, the mode of the UV edit changes. So we click on it, we move our mouse in here and press enter. Now when we drag and select, we should get yellow, but we're not because we're not in the correct tool. We have to have the selection tool active. We select, we should get yellow here. And once again, it's not working as expected. Let's press enter. See, that does get me my transform, but you can see when I move these around, I am reshaping my geometry just by sculpting with UVs. Now, the bug you're probably seeing that I'm seeing is that we can no longer select these. And this could be because I am, let's see. Okay, we are selecting them. It's just not visually showing me the selection, which is weird. But we'll just trust that they are selected there. And I kind of like what's happening here with this. So let's see if we can tune it in a little. Well, we want to go the other way. I'm sure there's a roll off where it finally, yeah goes black. And that's what you want to look for. You want to look for the dark areas for your seams here. Maybe we can mouse in and kind of get to that. Um, figure out like uh, right there. This area here is this area here. So we can see just by uh, dragging th this row of X's which we see selected, we can kind of dial in what we want. And maybe we do want the edge of that pipe, like the edge of this pipe here, to be our crossover point into our next area. We can pop back into the pop sop, maybe move this up a little bit. And we'll go back to single view, mouse wheel out, and there you have it. A text sphere, which is true mesh geometry. You could export this and use it as a model in other programs or somewhere else in Houdini. And with that, I'm out.